Good afternoon to this. Um, my name is uh, Rafał Stanecki. I'm policy officer at the European Commission uh, and uh, uh, DG, D, DG Move. So I will have the uh, pleasure to present four excellent projects uh, on transport infrastructure resilience, uh, which cover numerous areas of risk assessment, uh, preparation, response, uh, recovery phases, uh, infrastructure monitoring, maintenance, um, simulation modeling, and safety, of course. Um, I would start uh, maybe with the policy aspect of the uh, whole, whole this uh, effort. Uh, transport is, uh, transport in infrastructure um, uh, has a, very important role in, uh, and this is uh, re reflect in, uh, reflected in uh, um, uh, European policy framework. Uh, also, with the time, uh, adaptation, mitigation policies of the cr climate change are, are, are getting stronger role uh, and having a stronger impact uh, um, on European policy. Uh, the overarching document is called European Green Deal. So this is about how to achieve climate neutrality by 2050. And uh, in transport, it means 90% uh, reduction of emissions uh, by 2050. Uh, there are numerous policies in place in order to implement uh, Green Deal. Also those uh, which uh, concern transport infrastructure and uh, large scale inf inf infrastructures. Um, at DigiMove, we have a sus uh, sustainable and smart mobility stra strategy from December 2020. There are 82 initiatives in 10 areas with uh, um, concrete measures to achieve a green deal in, in four years. Um, in this strategy, uh, it is also stated that uh, climate change, uh, the infrastructure must be uh, adapted to climate change and made resilient to disasters. And this aspect uh, is being uh, treated in a 10T review, Trans-European Network, uh, uh, mm, mm, European policy on trans-European trans network, climate adaptation strategy, and uh, guidance on uh, climate proofing. Um, in 10 review, uh, transport infrastructure resilience and maintenance gain uh, particular attention. The proposal, which is now under negotiation with uh, co-legislators, uh, mentions resilience to climate change environmental and human-made disasters, cybersecurity, and other um, exceptional occurrences affecting functioning of EU transport system. Um, the quality of, the concept of quality of transport infrastructure has been extended into the whole life cycle of the um, infrastructure, and maintenance is uh, uh, mentioned there too. Uh, the second part is EU strategy on adaptation to climate change, and there are four principal objectives. Uh, smart adaptation, which is about uh, actions uh, uh, supporting robust data and risk assessment tools. Uh, faster adaptation, because climate change is accelerating. More systemic adaptation, because climate change uh, impacts various uh, areas of our life and increased international uh, action for climate resilience. Now, in order to implement all this agenda, we have research, in, 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 we need a solid research innovation to, 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 to support it. Um, already in the two previous uh, framework programs, uh, FP7, Horizon 2020, 
uh, 1.3 billion has been invested in over 600 projects dealing with transport infrastructure. The current research innovation program, Horizon Europe, is a, has a total budget of 95 uh, uh, billion euros for seven years. Uh, uh, climate, energy, and mobility cluster has uh, 15 billion of this amount. Uh, the four projects which uh, will be presented uh, today are closely linked with uh, objective of decarbonization, uh, climate resilience, and di digitalization. So uh, I would like to invite the, the first uh, uh, presenter, Mr. Solas, uh, please come and present to present the RESIST project. Thank you very much. Hello from my side. Uh, my name is Dr. Vasilis Soulas, and I'm going to present you the RESIST project. The RESIST stands for Resilient Transport Infrastructure to Extreme uh, Events. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize on behalf of the consortium, since I'm coming from ICCS, who is the coordinator of the project, but the team who is mainly worked there, uh, together with the rest of the consortium, is in a remote uh, bridge somewhere in the middle of Greece, in a mountainous area, having their first trial out of the two trials, and the next is going to be in uh, less than a month. Uh, the project, some, some first information about the project. The project is part of the Horizon 2020 project MG 7.1 2017. It is a research and innovation project. It started on the 1st of September 2018 and has a duration of 46 months. It was initially 36, but due to COVID restrictions on traveling and accessing the, uh, the site, it was extended by 10 months and is going to end uh, by the end of uh, June this uh, year. It has an overall budget of 4.9 million euros, and it was coordinated by the Institute of Communication and Computer Systems in uh, Athens, Greece. There are 17 partners that uh, compose the consortium of the projects, as you can see, spread across many countries in Europe. And there are two infrastructure users, two road operators, one in Greece and uh, one in Italy, where the final trials are going to uh, take place. Now, the objectives of the projects when having extreme events infrastructures and runs extreme events, we can imagine events happening due to the climate change, physical corruption, or corruption and, uh, uh, during the use, let's say, of the infrastructure, or an accident, or a man-made uh, 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 event. So the main concerns are first to protect the users and ensure seamless mobility. We don't want to have accidents on those critical infrastructure, but also want to respond as soon as possible when something occurs in order, in order let's say, to, to move uh, and uh, reshape the traffic and use alternative ways, especially in those cases where the areas are remote and there are no many alternative uh, pathways to the final destination. The second uh, uh, critical uh, objective of the RESIST project and overall is to prevent predict and decrease the resilience of the infrastructure. And uh, this is taking place mainly using all of those uh, sensors that were developed in the project in order to monitor the structural, the structural uh, situation of uh, the infrastructure and take some measurements before something uh, uh, more critical uh, occurs. And of course, the last one is uh, to, to react and to provide, uh, to minimize the impact of any potential issue that happens in the critical infrastructure, and of course, finally, to restore the service and ensure this seamless mobility and close this uh, circle of uh, the objectives. Uh, the main target of the RESIST project is mainly bridges, large bridges uh, on highways and tunnels. This is the critical infrastructure that was uh, in the core uh, uh, of the project. Here you can see the architecture of used in the uh, resist project. On the top right, you can see the critical infrastructure, which is the bridges and the tunnels. Uh, all those infrastructure is equipped with multiple of sensors. The sensors are, either are mainly wireless because of the difficult position where it is located, most likely under the bridge or at the ceiling of uh, the, uh, the tunnel, and some of those sensors were, in, were built and were installed 
by this air pass, these drones that were used in the project. So besides using already the uh, sensors being there, the project had as a one outcome the installation of wireless sensors within this uh, infrastructure. On the right part, at the top left part, it is, let's say, this R pass, this uh, remote piloted aircraft systems, let's call them drones for simplicity, where they have this uh, onboard sensors, and in Resist we used commercial drones the, from the expensive part of the commercial drones, and we have enhanced them with capabilities in order to support, let's say, their functionality in those uh, restricted um, uh, environments like the, the bridges and the tunnels. Uh, a critical part between the hardware, which is on the, on, the, uh, on the top layer of architecture and the bottom layer of the application, it is the communication layer, and this is a thing that was uh, very important in the Resist project because of the difficulty of having seamless connectivity in those uh, specific areas. Uh, just imagine being in the middle of a mountainous area and you have to reach and to navigate the drone, the Airbus, uh, under the bridge. So you need specific communication schemes and multiple different communication alternatives to guide them. Uh, as part of this communication part, there was also this Redcom communication module, which is pretty much a trailer that can be installed ad hoc close to the infrastructure that you, you, that you want to inspect. And you can use it in order to navigate drones, get the pictures, get the data, and interact with the, uh, with the drones themselves. A critical part is also the cyber security part because those data have to be transferred somewhere further away from the area of the inspection. And the large circle at the bottom, it is pretty much all the different monitoring tools, the different software, the user interfaces, and the situation awareness and decision support tools that were part of the project and part of the resist as, let's say, uh, uh, a reaction on when something, uh, crit when a critical infrastructure has some issues to, to be solved, a crack or whatever is this one. Uh, finally, on the bottom uh, part, you can see that part of the part of the project was a mobile application that was used to have the interaction between the users of the critical infrastructure of the roads and, let's say, the road operator. Uh, one thing is for, from the users to inform for potential issues in the infrastructure playing the role of an alternative, let's say, sensor. And the other way around, to inform the uh, road users when something uh, happens, let's say the a lane has been closed or whatever, in order to alter the, the traffic and minimize let's, the impact of this situation to the uh, traffic. Now we're getting into the actual innovations of the project. The, uh, the project was very innovative in many aspects, especially in the RPAS uh, domain. Uh, first of all, there was this aerial robot for the inspection and mounting of sessions or bridge antennas, which were based on commercial drones. Then they built uh, ultrasonic sensors suitable for the Airpass, uh, as I mentioned be uh, before. Also, computer vision systems suitable for the Airpass as well, cameras and leaders. The secure and resilient communication system in order to have this seamless co connectivity with the drones when they are under the bridge or when within uh, in the, uh, inside the tunnel. The cross labor cyber security solution, as I mentioned, that has to go from the actual hardware to the end applications and finally to the mobility, to the mobile application. And of course, the mobility continuity for passengers and freight under extreme events. And uh, all of them were combined into this, as we call it, integrated resist platform in order to support the overall uh, functionality. Here, we're going to have uh, in a short period of time, because the time flies, uh, what are the main uh, innovations? We have the visual inspection uh, innovations, which was built on commercial drones, but due to the hard environment, to the harsh environment, has to be uh, built specifically. The propellers had to be uh, combined. There was a camera mounted on top of this uh, octa-core uh, drone that were used because if you want to have a view at a very closed angle, then it's better to have the cameras on top of the drone instead on the bottom that it's usually there. The, there was issues with the vibration that have to be, to be solved. The electronics have to be covered because of the harsh environment and the dust, and uh, many other different aspects that had to be solved before uh, deploying the drones, the ARPA systems to the actual infrastructure. Uh, besides the visual inspection uh, ARPAS, there was also a contact inspection 
robot which was using a mechanical arm in order to check uh, other issues that might occur in, uh, in the infrastructure, uh, both in, under the bridge and as we saw later on within uh, uh, the tunnel. For that, uh, thing, for that innovation, also uh, uh, commercial drones uh, were used and plenty of modifications that you can see here uh, were done in order to make them possible to be uh, installed in uh, the corresponding infrastructure. Uh, here you can see some, some more uh, innovations that were in included uh, in the drones used for the bridge uh, inspections, like the propeller protection is a main one because of the environment. And uh, as I told you, there was plenty of prototypes that were finished and are being tested uh, now in under a bridge in Greece and later on in a tunnel in uh, Italy. There is also a contact inspection robot specifically designed for the tunnels themselves, which has totally different requirements and totally different uh, uh, constraints. And uh, based on also commercial drones, they have been enhanced in order to improve uh, its capabilities, like accuracy, like to have 2D scans, etc., etc. There are plenty of details in the site of the project for uh, if you wish to, to delve into those uh, details. Also, a part of the innovations was some stereo sensors that were customly 3D printed, uh, designed to fit in the use cases involved uh, uh, in the resistance. They use different high industrial cameras and onboard computers in order to have this seamless connectivity with the uh, module I described uh, before. Finally, one of the main applications, one of the main innovations of the project is this resist mobile applications, which is pretty much a rerouting protocol uh, when we have a closure, both total closure of the bridge or the tunnel or parcel in order to provide you some alternative, uh, some alternative uh, routes um, and to interact mainly with the, with the end users. Now we are in the final part, final uh, part of the proposal of the project, and it's going to be validated in real conditions and infrastructure. The first one, it is a bridge called Bridge T9 in the Peristeri area. It is the bridge that you can see here in a remote mountainous area in Greece, and the trials are going to take place tomorrow and the day after. And the second pilot, a dual, let's say, pilot, it is uh, another bridge in Italy, and the St. Petronilla tunnel also in Italy, that the trials will take place early May. And this pretty much will conclude the work to be done in uh, the project. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Vasilis. Uh, we have a Q&A part at the end, but if there are any imminent questions to the presentations, uh, we, can, we can go now. Uh, I don't see any, any raised hands, so I will thank you very much. I will invite and the next uh, presenter, uh, Sofia, uh, to present uh, Panoptis. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you might notice in your program leaflet that my name isn't in included. Uh, that was due to a last minute uh, uh, communication mishap with the organizers. But um, it's important that we're here because we're in the final stages of the project. We're finalizing it. My name is Sophia. I'm from uh, the University of Twente and I'll be representing the consortium, uh, 14 partners as a whole. And um, to start you off uh, with the project. So uh, Ponoptis uh, is, is, has a quite similar, uh, addresses a quite similar problem as uh, the previous speaker, as the RESIST project. Uh, transportation operators and engineers, they face greater challenges uh, regarding the inspection, uh, assessment, maintenance uh, of the overall road infrastructure network. And the main factors that uh, introduce these challenges are related to aging infrastructures, uh, climate change, extreme weather conditions, and other natural and man-made hazards. Uh, and on top of that, there's an increasing traffic demand and um, 
sometimes def deferred uh, uh, maintenance and uh, repairs. So uh, just to present Panoptis in a, in a brief uh, uh, comprehensible package, uh, what we aim to do is uh, address the problem of continuous monitoring of road infrastructures. Um, uh, road debris was a factor in over 50,000 police reports crashes uh, across a three year span. Um, uh, car accidents have also introduced a major societal cost, um, in increasing uh, landslide events and uh, floods have introduced major societal and economical uh, uh, influences. So uh, next to that, Podoptis also tries to address uh, the microclimate monitoring um, by introducing uh, uh, forecasting and now casting of um, the microclimate uh, around the road infrastructure. Um, here we try to include the factors such as uh, temperature, humidity, uh, wind turbulence, frost, heat balance, and ev evaporation. And then finally, uh, we're also looking at the more continuous degradation of road infrastructures that also have a major influence on day-to-day -day operations of road operators. Uh, we have mainly looked at uh, the detection of cracks uh, or potholes. So the scope of Panoptis uh, is to provide uh, the following list of, uh, of, of topics, um, which is to uh, provide a distributed and standardized system to optimize the multi-sensor fusion. Uh, to improve the prediction of structural and geotechnical safety of road infrastructures, uh, to include weather modules for high-resolution tailored weather and precipitation forecasts, uh, to include multi-hazard modeling uh, that cover uh, indirect climate change-related hazards, uh, including geohazards, uh, think of landslides. Um, the, uh, the aim was also to design a holistic resilient assessment platform a common operational picture, a decision support system, and uh, combine it all in an enhanced visualization interface, uh, which is the incident management system. Um, finally, we, uh, uh, yeah, we, we are validating and demonstrating this solution in two real case studies. Uh, one close to the site where Resist is also operating, near the Egnatia Odos Highway in, uh, in Greece. And the other side is uh, near a highway in uh, Madrid in Spain. So um, the Panoptis ecosystem in a, in a short brief package is, uh, uh, yeah, looks like this. Um, uh, these, these include the, the, the modules that I, that I spoke about before. Uh, the decision support system, the climate change models, the common operational picture, the holistic resilient assessment platform, multi-hazard models, and the incident management system. All of this is to, uh, to, to achieve early awareness, uh, early warnings, and early uh, damage assessment warnings, uh, to enhance the response phase, uh, to um, to, to, uh, to achieve uh, automated and uh, mit mitigation planning. And um, in order to in increase resilience, uh, the main aim, of course, is to achieve preparedness uh, to support adaptation and mitigation measures and optimize response planning. So to give you a bit more uh, examples of uh, the actual problems that we were dealing with, um, I will first talk about the defect identification. Um, here the main uh, objectives were to answer two basic questions. What kind of defects uh, can we find on the, on the road infrastructure and where are the defects located? Uh, you can see on top uh, examples of uh, drone flights that we did uh, on a simulated uh, infrastructure uh, area where we placed some debris on the road and attempted to uh, detect and highlight them. Um, and on the bottom, you, in the middle row, you can see uh, damage detection from a mobile vehicle mapper uh, obtained using a 360 video camera. And on below, you can see uh, uh, a deep learning model that uh, segments the corrosion uh, of uh, 
the steel structures under side bridges. So these deep learning uh, modules uh, as, as a singular uh, methodology aren't that novel, but what we've tried to do is to address uh, the, uh, to, to improve on the accuracies, but also the speed. Um, in case of the, the drone-based damage detections, we've uh, included a uh, onboard uh, computation system to achieve real-time uh, damage detection. And um, we also wanted to, uh, to make sure that the information that is there is also included in, in the learning uh, process of uh, the road operators. Here are some more examples of uh, pothole detections. And uh, another example of uh, what Panoptis aimed to do is to develop hazard models and tools. Uh, risk is a combination of uh, hazard, exposure, and vulnerability. So these three entities were included in the hazard models and tools. Um, and specifically for our infrastructure, we included uh, information on uh, buildings, infrastructure, people, um, um, and in the specific uh, uh, pilot sites that we were dealing with, we mainly looked at the, the risk of earthquakes, landslides, and floods. So uh, this is an example of the output of such a hazard model. Um, here, the, 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 the hazard uh, were visualized as a function of uh, how, how probable, probable it is that they occur within uh, 50 to 100 to 500 years. Um, and these models are uh, pre-calculated. They are uh, in the system. Um, and the information can be retrieved uh, immediately uh, based on the real-time information that is being retrieved on the site itself. This is an example of the, of the visual of, uh, of earthquake-based uh, hazard modeling. Um, here, the intensity uh, the risk is uh, plotted based on uh, a function of peak ground acceleration uh, values. Um, here again, those models were pre-calculated and they are stored in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the system and can be retrieved based on uh, real-time values that are being observed in the field. Um, these uh, model models, th this information is all uh, coming together inside this uh, integrated Panoptis tool, uh, which looks like this. Um, the, ma the main uh, advantage of the system is that it allows road operators to precisely observe uh, uh, what, is, uh, what the factors are that, uh, that influence a specific accident or event in, in, their, uh, in, their, in their specific road infrastructure. So on the left, you can see how the tool looks like uh, when you just look at it from a surface. But if you then click on a specific uh, accident or event, you can see the more integrated information, uh, the precise information that uh, gives an expert a better view on what's happening. Uh, in addition, uh, there's a, 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 a research tab, uh, a resource tab that uh, gives the road operators a precise view on what kind of equipment and what kind of uh, resources they have to their availability that they can use. Um, so those resources, uh, resources include, for example, uh, drones, uh, mobile vehicles, um, uh, uh, meteo, meteo stations. And uh, uh, there's also a, uh, a sensor section included that uh, includes information on the different types of sensors that were installed in, 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 the, in the site. And um, you can also uh, view the, the, the specific warnings um, that were being produced based on the, on the sensors that were uh, installed in the, in the site. Um, and then finally, uh, the forecasting and now costing uh, conditions of the demo site are also included. Um, they are, uh, uh, you can see uh, very, very, uh, the, the, for, the forecasting now costing, uh, they 
uh, range up to an hour, uh, zero hour, one hour, but they can even span uh, two or three days in, in advance. So uh, that was me on behalf of the consortium. Um, I would encourage you to note down the name Panoptis in your leaflet because it's not in there. Uh, if there are questions uh, that I can answer, please uh, let me know. And also visit the website. We are uh, closing the project uh, in two months. Uh, so uh, more results from our demos will be up shortly. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. Are there any questions? At the end, okay. The, <laughs> thank you for this very interesting uh, presentation, and I would like to invite the next presenter, Pedro, to present Project Safeway. The floor is yours. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, okay, my name is Pedro Arias. I am professor at the University of Vigo. Among, I am the coordinator of the uh, Geotechnologies Research Group, and this group is the coordinator of this project, the Project Safeway. Uh, the title of this is GIS Based Infrastructure Management System for Optimized Response to Strange Events of Terrestrial Transport Networks. Okay, this project was uh, including the topic MG 7.1, Resilience to Extreme Natural and Events. Uh, in our consortium, uh, uh, was working uh, 14 partners with more than 40 people from eight different countries. And the project has started in September of 2018 until the last February during 24 months and with a total budget about uh, more than four, uh, four half and half a million of euros. The aim of the project was the design, validation and implementation of holistic methods, strategies, tools and technical interventions in relation with the resilience of the transport infrastructures, right? Then the, in the in, in terms of resilience, uh, uh, there are three main components, is the preparation, response and recovery, and mitigation. And our project was addressed to improving the resilience to extreme events in these in this infrastructures, in these uh, transport infrastructures. Um, it's important, uh, I think, in my view, to make a short uh, review of the uh, resilience in relation with the transport infrastructure, right? Then, uh, in the up of the graph, um, mm, there are the main three phases of the resilience, is the preparation, mitigation, and recovery. Um, any um, um, action or any measure to increase the resilience must be addressed to reduce the uh, failure probabilities, this is the preparation, reduce the consequence from failures, this is mitigation, and reduce the time of recovery. Right. Then uh, these uh, three concepts can be expressed as a robustness, redundancy, and rapidity. Okay. Um, mm, any mm, uh, measure to increase the resilience must be addressed to reduce the area of the curve in the bottom of the graph. Right. Um, and of course, some um, Safeway has the same uh, uh, objective to uh, make a suggestion, a proposal of measures to reduce this area. And then, um, according to this, uh, the, the actions of, um, of the Safeway project was addressed for the three, these three phases. And for the previous phase, we have worked with a database and maps with intensity or frequency of natural extreme events and monitoring systems as well, mainly to remote sensing techniques and um, critic areas and vulnerability maps. And in the next uh, phase, in the occurrence phase, we have worked with um, alternative uh, routes because uh, uh, you must consider that our project was designed in a multimodal uh, point of view of the, of the transport, right? Considering different modes of transport. Then for the occurrence phase, we have worked with um, alternative routes uh, when the, the, 
the, um, the risk or the event, the strange event uh, occur, um, impact knowledge of the event in the infrastructure. Um, uh, we have worked uh, as well with um, connection systems with MRD service and infrastructure managers. Um, lastly, for the, for the last phase, recovery phase, we have worked with uh, new construction techniques and new materials, um, and for instance, cell repairs capability materials. And all these develops, all these uh, tools, was integrated in a Safeway platform. Um, I will talk more in depth about this in the next slides. Um, the, um, our project was divided in different uh, components or different work packets and with uh, different uh, objectives, but objectives, but at the same time, all together are connected and make sense to the Safeway platform and to the to the, our objectives to, to design measures to increase the resilience. In this uh, work package, we have uh, worked with um, quantitative, quantitative risk uh, assessment for natural hazards, but in this case at European level, right? Um, we have designed or we have, uh, we have worked in two different tasks. Um, the first one was a review of a global um, European database on weather and natural hazards and collection of open access hazard maps integrated with, integrable in a GIS environment. Uh, we have worked uh, uh, with a more than 30 database. And this information together, combining with a role and railway networks database. Uh, these actions of this task was addressed to analyze the vulnerability of the transport infrastructures. And the, uh, another task was uh, based on proje uh, projections about the future scenarios. Mm, the, mo the methodology was applied in this case to calculate the risk damage and the direct, and direct cost associated to these spot infrastructures. We have made several deliverables. All these are available in, in CORDIS. Um, um, it's open to access, right? And the other um, activities, other work package was uh, dedicated to quantitative and risk assessment for extreme events, but in this case, uh, at asset scale, right, or asset level. Uh, um, in the previous ones was uh, about uh, European scale, but in, in this case to asset scale. And different tasks in this work package. Um, the first one was a structural and functional vulnerability assessment using fragile curves and degree of loose functions of these uh, assets. Um, other task was about to, to make a framework to evaluate the impacts of natural and human man-made events on critical structures and considering different uh, issues like uh, human, economic, environmental, and social political. Um, finally, uh, deterioration and models uh, for deterioration prediction, reliability analysis for maintenance prioritization based on predictive models. And all these uh, actions was addressed, as I, I said before, to asset scale, but in this work package, we have considered as well network level um, for this, the, the function describing the functionality loose, for instance, reduction of traffic capacity due to a given hazard intensity. The corresponding deliverables. And right, in this work package was based on remote sensing technologies. Um, we have made a multi-scale infrastructure monitoring um, beam to store this information. Um, we have worked with um, satellite and terrestrial remote sensing technologies and techniques for inventory and inspection of critical assets. And the data collected in this task was uh, processed using uh, artificial intelligent uh, technologies or artificial intelligent techniques and specifically machine learning algorithms for automatic data processing and key performance indicators calculation. And finally, the last task was about the uh, BIN being modeling for infrastructures uh, using open standards like uh, IFC uh, in, in, our, in this case. Um, the deliverables. Uh, the next, the next uh, work packet was about the monitoring by cross-source data um, for the other side and um, analyzing the evacuation service. 
Um, in this case, we have worked with our um, real to analyze analyzing the availability of the real time data and new information resources that we can use for these for these uh, goals. Um, we have analyzed the, dri uh, the advanced driver assistance systems for innovative and road monitoring. Um, finally, um, social media has a means, we have analyzed, we have worked with a social media, has a means to recruit data. Um, overall, analyzing the influence driver behavior. The deliverables and the other work package was um, the integration of the different uh, tools of the different uh, ICT Safeway solutions in the same platform, in the Safeway platform. Um, this work package was addressed to different ICT Safeway solutions, as I said before, and specifically MS Manager to visualize the information, um, Reticus to with um, uh, working with a satellite image, and Resuite for analyze the the to integrate this uh, alphanumeric data and analysis scenario, etc. And all these. Um, the tools or these ICT uh, uh, solutions was integrated in, in, the, in the platform. Um, all these uh, um, so, uh, solutions work together, okay, and connecting between them. And the last, the last uh, no, the last, but the, another important uh, work package and, and, and connected with, uh, with the last phase to recovery phase was the, uh, to design action plans for long-term resilience of transport network. And in this case, our approach was considering the resilience, focus on reconsideration of energy planning. Um, we have worked adapting needs of linear infrastructure and new design base, for instance, based on uh, shape memory materials and fiber optics. And last but not least, an analysis of the legal and normative framework for the new solutions. Um, talking about the cooperation with another Horizon 2020 actions, we have um, made cluster, uh, clustering activities with the projects uh, supported uh, in this call in the, in the topic uh, MG 7.1. Um, resist, foresee, and panoptis, and these products are, uh, the representative people is, are here. Um, we, have, uh, we are working now uh, with uh, uh, another Horizon 2020 project, in Safe project is the, the name. Um, we are making a close cooperation, close cooperation with this uh, project, and the, the, the goal of this project is, to, is uh, for surveying technologies, safety evaluation and risk man management for bridges and tunnels. Um, relative to the future risk needs uh, and several um, needs uh, arise from the, from the, um, based on the results of Safeway, um, I have highlighted here uh, six, but perhaps can be more. But the more relevant for our main point of view is the, the, the are these. And the first is perhaps the paradigm shift from the corrective maintenance to predictive maintenance uh, in relative to the transport infrastructures. Um, um, perhaps must be work more in depth about the clear definition of the resilience based on quantified performance indicators and at the same time identify the key performance indicators um, it's uh, relevant, it's important as well, the homogenization of results achieved um, based on new paradigms Some technologies, has a monitoring um, technology, some crowdsourcing data. Um, the condition assessment um, based on condition ratings perhaps must be in included this, uh, this concept of this topic in this, uh, in this uh, field of work. Um, based on transfer quantify uh, measures obtained from the new monitoring technologies. Um, we think it's very important to uh, further exploitation of remote sensing technologies, specific, specialized to valorization of the European investments in Earth observation programs, Galileo, Copernicus, Sentinel, etc. 
Um, finally, uh, define a, and promote past paths to standardization of this data, um, specifically infrastructure monitoring, information management, new sensors, smart materials, etc. Um, almost there. Uh, and follow up the of Segway achievements. We are working now in a exploitation agreement of the Segway IT platform and individual service. Um, we are um, exploring as well, um, in connection, mainly in connection with the, uh, the previous one uh, talk about the InSafe project, uh, for the contribution to new European standards in monitoring of structural condition, information management through open standards, etc. And relative to the plans to market, um, uh, some service of the Safeway IT platform achieved to the market at the end of the project, specifically Reticus, um, Safeway, Reticus Safeway, sorry, um, MS Manager, etc. New versions or versions of the, the, the results and, um, are achieving to the, to the market. Um, uh, we, are, we uh, have working as well to about the business and exploitation plans um, are currently under develop for the other tools and service. And that's all from my side. Um, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Pedro, for this interesting presentation. Are there any questions at this moment? Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Um, as ah, there is a question. Please go on. I thought the session Actually, uh, it's nearly ended. We are missing uh, the last uh, presentation. Uh, although we have a presentation, so uh, <laughs> uh, we have to improvise. Uh, and uh, I think in this role, it will be me probably. Uh, The presenter had an impediment uh, last minute, uh, but I think it's a very interesting uh, project, and uh, I would like to give you some quick uh, overview about uh, this project. Uh, the project is called uh, 4C. It is about to provide uh, cost-effective and reliable results to improve resilience of transport infrastructure as the ability to reduce the magnitude and duration of disruptive events. They analyze a long list of these disruptive events, you can see there, and uh, through six uh, case studies. Uh, the objectives of the project uh, were divided into two groups for uh, national transport authorities and operators, and users and uh, freight. Uh, in the first, for the first group, uh, national transport uh, authorities and transport infrastructure operators, the objective was to um, establish a science-based preventive design, operation maintenance strategies for resilient infrastructure management, uh, methodology to monetize resilience in investment decisions, uh, predicting and alerting on potential risk scenarios, um, increasing the understanding uh, of the effects of risk scenarios, uh, recommending the optimal resilience and infrastructure adaptation strategies, and the last one, supporting emergency dynamic management uh, plans to ensure citizen safety and rerouting. For use and right, the project uh, um, focus on ensuring safety of citizens against uh, extreme events uh, and implementation of dynamic, safe, and efficient contingency, contingency plans. Uh, then implementing safer and quicker routes by means of well-defined communication tools um, and identification of congestion scenarios and incidents. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, we have sever several uh, activities which were carried out uh, in the project. 
So to develop baseline and a target uh, level of service and level of resilience assessment. Uh, uh, the activities included uh, developing uh, guidelines to, uh, to uh, define uh, metric KPIs and KRIs, uh, guidelines to set uh, target values uh, of the level of service and resilience, to integrate the measures of the level of service and resilience in governance and management, and the guidelines uh, have been transformed into CWA, um, <coughs> which you can, which you can, which we explained in 4C uh, website. Um, as well as uh, software uh, has been developed uh, called governance module to support decision uh, making. Uh, then hybrid integration of terrestrial and satellite sensing systems for mo uh, monitoring of infrastructure in the risk areas. Um, I maybe continue uh, with other uh, list of activities. Improving uh, infrastructure resilience and road safety, uh, reducing risk and users' risk perception. It included uh, research on pavements, uh, drainage management, innovative engineering of links and interconnections. So this is a material site. Uh, then we have update and, uh, and pro preparation of methodologies, uh, practice and solutions. Here we have climatic databases to improve the effects of climate in infrastructures, uh, design and management of infrastructure in saving zones, selections and definition of optimal interventions in infrastructures. Um, um, flooding methodologies, uh, shake map scenarios, algorithms uh, for selection and definition of efficient and optimal actions, um, hybrid data fusion framework, SHM algorithms. We continue with uh, activities which were carried out in the project. Uh, um, the, uh, the project come up with a single toolkit uh, for infrastructure man managers. Uh, there's a small picture presenting it. Um, uh, besides, uh, the project uh, come up with operational resilience schemes uh, covering the whole life cycle of the infrastructures and resilience uh, phases. I'll continue. Then we have a list of actually 12 uh, 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 mid to long term impact of the project. Uh, I will signal all of these 12, um, starting with um, providing resilience and service de definition indicators and objectives and how they should be used from the transport infrastructure manager's point of view. First one. The second one, uh, demonstrate how structural deformation can be detected from satellites and combined with in situ sensor data and virtual physical environments. The third one, um, offer uh, ways to intelligibly processing, integrate, fusing, and interconnecting big streams of data. Fourth, uh, impact of the project, um, implement an asset failure prediction capability. The, six, the, the fifth uh, in new materials, design of new permeable pavements aimed to improve network's resilience. The sixth, uh, improve the calculations for determining flow of water <coughs> and floodings. The seventh, uh, improve the design of sustainable drainage systems. The eighth, uh, provide 
single smart and slow protection kit. The ninth uh, impact covers providing performance-based designs concept for safety routes for efficient traffic management. Uh, the 10th impact uh, covers uh, updated design, construction, and remediation plans uh, and uh, operational and maintenance plans. 11th impact covers uh, dynamic approach to the communication and uh, contingency plans. And the last uh, uh, impact on psychological and behavioral dimension uh, is about perception and decision making in a way that can capture users' attitude uh, to transport uh, risks uh, and allowing for more detailed, precise contingency plans. I would stop here. <laughs> I hope it was interesting, this improvised uh, presentation. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I will give, uh, I'm giving floor to Thierry Goget for the last part. He is prepared. <laughs> thank you, Rafael. So um, resilience is a very important topic, as, uh, as you know. And uh, if we look at the list of uh, the whole program, if we, we can just imagine that if the network, if the road is broke, broken down, everything here falls down. So the infrastructure, the hard infrastructure, and everything around it is definitely essential. And, um, well, I'm very happy to see that uh, a normal program for a conference normally set up about five minutes for questions, and we always end up with 30 seconds, allowing one question, if still time. And this time, for this resilience session, we actually have almost 40 minutes. So imagine how long we have now to, uh, to discuss all together. And I think this is something that, sorry? So we don't need to lock the door. I'm sure that uh, we will find a way to, um, or we will seize the opportunity to, to discuss um, more in length about this uh, critical issue of resilience. So um, what I'd like to do is uh, maybe to, uh, let's say, arrange this discussion into a set of three main questions uh, from my side, to which I will also invite the, the audience to, uh, to complement so that it's uh, quite interactive uh, between all of us. And um, so, well, Rafael, I will not ask you to respond on behalf of the uh, last project which was presented, but uh, I will certainly uh, ask the other one to, uh, to contribute. And, um, well, um, <clears throat> I'd like first to, um, to go for um, uh, the first set of questions. And um, uh, you presented extremely well the achievement in the, each of your uh, specific projects. And I think that um, what could be nice now to, uh, to well, slightly give more insight uh, to the audience is about the, um, let's say, the critical element uh, of the different technologies you mentioned, so, uh, and especially the maturity of, uh, of each of them. So in all the sets of information you gave now, uh, could you please tell us where are you in the maturity development of your system solution and the uh, let's say, component technologies that are behind. And for that, um, I would probably start um, uh, with you, Vasilis, as you were the first speaker, but don't worry, the other one will be yes. also asked the same question. No, so, I, um, I well. will be short, I'm not needing 40 minutes. <laughs> uh, well, I, I think that as we saw there yeah. in the architecture, uh, as you go from bottom to the top, the top layers, I think, are very mature. The ARPA systems, the communication systems, the sensors, all those stuff are in high TRL. Actually, they are, now, are going to be presented now in the real world, in the real setup, so you can assume that it is the TRL 7 or 8. And I think with some extra effort on resiliency, as you said, uh, mainly it could reach a final product soon. So I think that the communication parts, the sensor parts, the drone parts are all very mature. What I think is still needs a lot of work and effort, and I think it needs a higher, a, a larger, let's say, uh, uh, probably uh, testing and trialing, is what also Professor Arias mentioned in the last uh, slot, which is this risk assessment and the predictive part. So we need to go from, from reaction to prediction, which is quite, I think, uh, tricky, because you don't want to act to react early, because you cannot close the, 
the main roads for for a long time mm -hmm. for a potential issue, but we can also don't want to act very late because then it is even more uh, worse. So I think in that level, this risk assessment management and all those stuff, I think uh, at least in the resist project, the TRL is slow and I think more work is needed there and probably this can be done also with the participation of then users which can potentially act as participatory sensing, let's say, components in the whole uh, solution. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vasilis. Um, well, what about you, Pedro? Okay. Um, in, in, it, in my view, it's a, it's a really difficult question, right? Because um, in the resilience, uh, we must consider two different levels. At a, a asset level or um, a, b a big scale level, um, at a network level or um, 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 actually European or a, um, or a country level, right? Then it's difficult to, to prioritize, uh, to prioritize uh, one of these um, <coughs> components or one of these um, elements in terms of the resilience. It's difficult to say uh, which is more important than other, okay? Because uh, all these um, elements must work together then, um, in my view, to think about the resilience uh, and forgetting some of these components is, uh, I think, is difficult, right? Then, uh, to, to study or to know in depth in the specific, um, each of these specific levels are different techniques, different technologies, um, and in my view, are um, all are um, important. But perhaps the remote sensing techniques, it's more, it's an opinion, right? Perhaps um, some people of the audience is not agree with me, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in my opinion, perhaps the remote sensing techniques is the more relevant because uh, if you want to, to work in a anticipate mode, perhaps is the most important component for this, right? Mm -hmm. But it's an opinion, of course, and perhaps um, this opinion is not objective because the remote sensing, remote sensing techniques is my field of work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's all. No, thank you, Pedro. And maybe before we go to you, Sofia, would there be some reaction to, to that last point uh, from, from the audience? Yeah, please. I think you can speak up. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, um, a lot of the things we're working on in these incredible projects, I suspect they have end users who want to use them. The point is, how do you get it to them when they need it? You, this is really the real challenge. So, you really need to be somehow tied to the industry verticals, you know, people who do cloud systems, people who do mobile phone networks. If you, if you can tie it to them and somehow they are in a position to make it available, it they will be. Mm -hmm. How would you react on that, maybe Pedro? Yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree with you. Um, in, in in our project, we have worked something about this topic and how we can uh, make an influence in the behavior of the of the people, of the drivers, of, of the users in general of the transport infrastructures. Um, and I agree with you; it's a very relevant and very important component. Okay. Um, because um, you perhaps you can uh, have a lot of measures, but if you have not the channel to achieve to the people, it's difficult to to have good results, right? Yeah, absolutely agree. 
All right. Uh, maybe, Sofia, would you like just to complement uh, this first part as well from your, your project side? Yes, I'll try to give my perspective on it. Um, the Panoptis ecosystem cons consists of different modules. Uh, you have the, the UAV part, you have the, the, the hazard modeling part, uh, and you have the IMS sy system itself. Um, and all those different modules separately, they have different TRL, TRL levels, in my opinion. Um, we, we have, uh, uh, as a consortium, uh, participated in this Horizon Booster program where we uh, try to see exactly if you want to bring the Panoptis ecosystem to, to market, what, um, what do you need to do, how do you need to, uh, how do you need to package all the different modules, uh, do, you do you package the whole uh, system as a whole or do you uh, uh, take uh, individual components and bring that to market? Um, and that has been a big discussion uh, while we were in this uh, in this booster program, uh, because the, the the technical partners they uh, think at a different level than the road operators do. And um, in in my view, uh, there's there's this bridge between uh, between the information that's being produced by the by the technical side of the project, uh, the, the technical partners, and the translation to how the information can actually be used uh, in practical scenarios. Um, for example, um, I've been working on the, on the remote sensing part and specifically uh, extracting uh, information from uh, UAV images, uh, but it, uh, it turns out that it's not sufficient to just say, there's a damage over here. Uh, you need to give a type of qualitative label to the damage. And uh, without feedback from the road operators, that's very difficult. Um, and just asking road operators for feedback uh, hasn't been that straightforward either because they also need some guidance on exactly uh, uh, on, on exactly the development of degradation or uh, or the meaning of, of a certain type of degradation and, and what kind of uh, consequences a type of degradation has on, on their day-to-day -day operation. So there's sometimes this, um, this, mis uh, this, this different language that, that everyone speaks within a project, which makes it, in, in my view, a bit hard to say exactly at what tier all level the put up this ecosystem is as a whole. Um, but some parts of the system are very mature, such as the, the IMS system, the, the, the communication between the different modules and the, and, the, and the data silos. So, yeah, not an easy answer, but... Uh, okay, but you try it at least. Yes. To give, to give, yeah. Maybe, you know, if we continue, so... Uh, maybe you wanted to react, Vasilis. Yeah, uh, yeah okay. Yeah. My, yeah. my background is networking, so sorry for that. So I'm trying to think about examples of how this, your statement will be networking. I mean, yeah. we have the 5G or the 4G, which is TRL9. It works perfectly. But if there's an earthquake and there's breakdown, nothing works. So should we have installed, let's say, an ad hoc solution based on SMS, on GPRS, based on Wi-Fi, based on Bluetooth, also across the infrastructure, even if it's low TRL or low quality in case of events. I mean, it should be useful, I suppose, but where is the limit and the economic, let's say, uh, variables where how many of those low TRL systems or low quality systems can you install in an infrastructure in order to, to think about, let's say, uh, potential issues. I, I was working in a couple of years ago in a project that was trying to use an automatic robot that was going to into uh, a collapsed building in order to find people there. The TRL was good, was fine, but it was extremely expensive. So the, the firefighters that we asked for were told us how much does it cost? It costs, let's like, say, some hundreds of thousands. But with those hundreds of thousands, we can get pretty much low TRL or low, co low uh, uh, how can I say, uh, technology level, very mature uh, tools in order to, 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 to build, or we can buy trucks or whatever. Why do we spend that much money in case if event occurs once per 100 years or, or in case mm -hmm. of what? So, I mean, it's a nice position, but I don't think how this can be done. I mean, yes, please, please, yes. Yeah. I think these two points, uh, 
Just one second. There is a microphone. It could be easier. Hi again. Uh, my name is Mehmet. I'm from Logica Field Labs. Um, uh, what Sofia mentioned, which is basically, uh, it is very difficult for people who are doing research mm -hmm. to communicate uh, with the same terms. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it is almost as if EU projects, you know, they emphasize dissemination a lot uh, because, but they also should emphasize maybe business development as a very key concept. Uh, especially in resilience, early stage developments have a chance to be used more so than in other projects because of the necessity, because not, nothing else is available. Mm -hmm. But I also agree in Vasilis's comment that not everything is going to be applicable. Out of, you know, maybe hundreds of projects and applications, maybe a dozen or two will be applicable, but how do you actually communicate and find them when everybody speaks different terminology and language? Mm -hmm. You really need, uh, I think, a further definition in the next calls coming up to see resilience as actually a chance to create early adopter communities because of the high need in low TRL subjects. In mobility or in digitalization, etc. Uh, getting into business development is difficult unless you really, really achieve TRL 789. But in resilience, it's a requirement. Go to Ukraine now. People will talk about what you're, everything you're discussing here is a reality there now. In Istanbul, a lot of things you're discussing is a re reality because Istanbul is a very accident-prone city with 20 million people, lots of migrants, refugees, floods and earthquakes and digital failures. A lot of things... Tunnels, we pass through bridges and tunnels all day long and everything you discuss, <laughs> you're always scared <laughs> with terrorism and everything. So low TRL solutions have a chance to get into business development ahead of other horizon calls, in my opinion, in, in resilience. And the way to do that is there is now a new thing called blockchain. There is a new incentive mechanism. This is one of our projects right now. The blockchain incentive mechanism can actually reward telco companies and transport companies and cloud companies to come into early stage projects, help their deployment. Because if the TRL actually picks up later on to daily usage, they will benefit tremendously and that blueprint is already working. The world has now an incredible amount of new projects based, I'm not talking about cryptocurrencies by the way, I'm talking about decentralized decision making ability mm -hmm. using blockchain. I'm not talking about Bitcoin or anything like that. The, the, the decentralized decision-making platforms are now quite mature, and a lot of things we're discussing here uh, can be used to incentivize uh, big companies. And that's our project right now that we're working on at Logica. And what we find is that we are able to talk to big companies, and they are joining our calls, but we have difficulty speaking to researchers for the same reason Sophia said. When we talk to them, the language gap and the vision gap takes too much difficulty with a lot of small projects. So some sort of an interface is needed. Uh, and I know it's difficult, but I think for Europe, this is strategically important because there's a chance to create early adopter communities for emerging technologies. Mm -hmm. For example, in mesh networks, uh, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, if you go to Ukraine now, this is exactly what's needed right now. That's what they need. And yet no one's deploying them. Yeah. And, um Thank you for this. And Rafael wants to react, and this is actually, yeah. Good, please go ahead. Thank Rafael. you. This was a very valid point, actually, and we have this valley of death and uh, how to uh, make, uh, how to apply a, a business uh, of projects which are developed research innovation stage. Um, and actually, I like this approach which you uh, uh, which you shared. Uh, we have a that it can be applied at the lower TRL levels uh, in uh, CEF tool uh, connecting Europe facility. So 25 billion found for uh, developing uh, transport net European transport networks. Uh, part of this uh, money is being spent f for implementing uh, research uh, projects, and I think this is a very good uh, way to look uh, how to implement uh, resilience-related. Uh, 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 ideas uh, into the existing uh, uh, transport networks. Oh. <laughs> uh, point taken. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, to all this. And uh, this also emphasizes uh, one element which was mentioned in Pedro's presentation about the redundancy of solutions. So basically, at the end, it's a network of solutions to, 
to make sure that the resilience will be at the highest uh, level. Pedro, you wanted to, uh, to add something or no? No? Okay. So this is very good. So now that we have this first set of uh, discussion, I'd like now that we move on uh, in a way to, uh, to the next steps and uh, you identify now the certain level of maturity. We understood that um, you are not yet at TRL9. We also understand that it's not needed necessarily to be at TRL9 to start, but still, if we want to, uh, to implement the solutions at least you have uh, now tried to develop, uh, there is need uh, for, uh, the last, for the next steps to reach this um, full maturity. And uh, so now I'd like that you enlighten us about these next steps, and then maybe we can start first with, with you, uh, Vasilis. Well, I think <coughs> the next steps are uh, pretty much straightforward for those uh, components that are on high mature level. I mean, they just need more trials and more and more stuff to become more straightforward how to adapt, uh, let's say, a drone to become uh, useful in such uh, scenarios. And then I think for the rest one, uh, Pedro had some nice points there to, to, to spend more time or more resources or more effort on this risk assessment and this participatory part mm -hmm. uh, because you need data and because uh, those kind of events are very rare, uh, it's very use difficult, I mean, to get the, the, useful, the useful data in order to, 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 to design your system to, mm -hmm. uh, to work properly. So th this is pretty much my... Mm, my idea, and I think uh, I, I like the point that it's not it's not always necessary to have the whole system ready to be deployed. You can have individual components, like the communication part, or the drone parts, or the cybersecurity part, or the application parts that we have seen here that can be deployed uh, as standalone yeah. components of uh, service. Yeah, thank you, Vasilis. Yeah, so maybe Pedro. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Um, in our case, uh, the the different solutions uh, are with a different uh, maturity level. Um, made, uh, made, uh, the, the most important uh, um, aspect for this is the origin of this, of this tool, right, of this IC tool. Because uh, several of them was made for uh, private companies uh, with a previous uh, experience or previous or these companies starting uh, with a with a base or with a previous um, uh, tool or etc but in another case some of these um, tools was made for the university and in this case the, the maturity level is different right it's absolutely different um, uh, as well because in the 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 ICT tools, uh, f uh, based on the um, on the university results, are more go more to, more, um, goes more to the scientific component and new paradigms, etc. Right? Then um, it's not um, the same maturity level. Um, um, and to to achieve the this uh, this level, perhaps the key component is the than the the um, the tool or the develop the develop of the tool are close to the market, right? Um, okay, I don't know how we can uh, uh, achieve to the same level. It's uh, really difficult because the the goals is not the same in not the same position. The companies and the big companies or or SMI companies is different. But um, for me, it's very important. I agree with Vasilis about the the different uh, IC tools make sense alone. All right, right. And of course, um, uh, mm, the all different tools must must work together. But in any case, alone makes sense and make a, a space in the market. Right. Um, okay, in our project, this is, this is the situation. Um, um, some of these uh, IC tools are very close to the market, are selling now, but in another case, are with a TRL uh, more uh, far of the of the market. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Pedro. And what about you, Sofia? Um, it's a difficult question. Uh, the system is, is already being used by the, by the two end users that we have in the project. Um, and we are getting feedback from them uh, that is being ready to be implemented in t uh, to improve the system. Um, in that sense, the system is quite mature. Um, what, is, what is needed for the next steps is uh, 
a bit more ex expanded feedback from uh, different types of stakeholders because we have developed a system with uh, a road operators that are quite uh, mature. Uh, they uh, know what they're doing. They already have uh, a, a technical department, uh, a maintenance and operation department who who are already doing their job without us. Uh, before we came along, they were already doing their job. We just made their, uh, we've, we've just attempted to make their day-to-day -day task a bit more efficient. Um, but what, uh, what would be most useful, I think, uh, for, for improving the system is uh, to get feedback from uh, road operators that, for example, are located in Africa, Asia, who are dealing with uh, poorer infrastructures, uh, with lesser if, um, communication infrastructures, uh, who are dealing with uh, the impacts of climate change much more. Um, that kind of feedback would be very useful. Um, because what would happen if you have a flooding in, a, in, a, in an area where your, uh, where your corrosion sensor is located? Uh, most likely you don't care about corrosion anymore. You care more about uh, uh, the event that, that is uh, happening in your, in your uh, corridor, your road, your road corridor. Um, how much money is needed for that? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. And uh, a last point uh, I would want to add is that the UAV part, specifically uh, in Panoptis, uh, needs some maturement. Um, we are dealing with uh, regulations, especially in Europe, um, which prohibit us to fly closely to road infrastructures. We have to keep a certain distance and uh, restrict our flying height, uh, which, which is limiting, uh, which is limiting for, for, for our research, but also to implement those, that information back to the Panoptis ecosystem. Um, yeah, uh, the rules and regulations uh, concerning UAVs, you cannot just adapt, and it makes sense that they are there for the safety of uh, your road users. Um, but yeah, there's some, there's some to be gained over there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I think it's been good to, to give further uh, insight into these next steps, and uh, as you know, there are in the room people representing the commission from the different DGs, and uh, including CINEA. So it's always good for them to hear um, what could be uh, some input into the next work programs, and I put an S on purpose so that it gives flexibility for that. And um, and this is, you know, a, a very important point. And maybe to to finish, you know, this last round of um, of discussion, um, let's imagine that you are the owner of your technologies. You have your companies. You have, uh, let's say, um, invested a lot of money, in t a lot of time, a lot of effort in developing it. And in the audience, you have the market. You have really a lot of opportunities to, um, to try to uh, say sell out your, your product. And so you are competitors now, or you could also be uh, partnering. But so what would be the, the main uh, element? How would you sell your, uh, your ID? Uh, how would you convince in the room um, the people to buy your, your product? And let's start maybe again with Vasilis. It's harder, but the first one sometimes... Can yes, it's hard to, <laughs> to sell now, yeah. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I have no idea because I'm a researcher mainly, but the idea is in order to sell something is to find a problem that you target. The problem here is cracks, problems, issues under a bridge that it is 100 meters from the ground. So this is pretty much uh, the selling point to find the, the real problem and the difficulties of doing this with an alternative, uh, yeah. with an alternative means. Uh, this is pretty much uh, 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 how I suppose to to to, to, se to, to, to sell this kind of uh, uh, technology that you save your uh, time and you save um, uh, resources in order to send there people with uh, or climb down or do install uh, sensors using other means or other uh, technologies. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm not sure that I have, I, I will make many sales, but... <laughs> well, I'm sure that you may convince, in a way, a few ones. Yeah. And so, Pedro, maybe, when you hear that, how would you differentiate from, uh, from this? 
Okay, um, it's a very, very, it's very difficult to to make a competition with my colleagues of this table because they are very nice projects. But perhaps if um, if um, um, I try to sell our um, our project, perhaps the main component or I try to highlight that our project um, um, try to affect or to design tools to increase the resilience in a multimodal point of view okay uh, we have not dedicated a specific our project to bridge tunnels or specific assets we consider as well but uh, not perhaps uh, done in depth like my colleagues my the, the projects but uh, our project try to 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 uh, study the, the resilience and to design measures to increase the resilience in a multimodal, right? Considering in general road, railway, etc. And perhaps is the main uh, difference. I don't know, or perhaps is the main advantage. Okay, because uh, as I said before, the resilience must be considered in the to different levels, right? To be effective, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if the people actually <laughs> <laughs> I, I think i see some heads nodding yeah so pedro and vasilis you set the the competition very high but i'm sure sofia will certainly try to let's say gain the market so yes yeah, so, sofia please well panoptis is super cheap so <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh>, you see <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah if you buy it now then no um <laughs> i think um uh, the advantage of Panoptis is that it's it's uh, it's very it's based on on rigorous science um, and especially in the the sites that we're working in Greece and in Spain we have uh, research partners who are very well uh, knowledgeable about what's happening in in that system and uh, the kind of factors that play a role so. Um, I think that's that's the main advantage. There's there's a lot of localized knowledge that is being utilized in the Panoptis system, and I think also we've been very adaptive to the feedback of the road operators. So once they uh, come up to us and say uh, we don't understand how this is working, uh, we don't understand what we're seeing, uh, can you improve it? Can you narrow it down? Then that is that is being done. So I think that's the main advantage of Panoptis. Thank you, Sofia. Bernard, please. Question here. I have a general question because I heard a lot about the resilience of the infrastructure against the climatic and natural actions. Uh, nothing about the live loads, uh, exploitation action, operation action. So, uh, what about the issue and challenge of the resilience in the future for traffic load, for uh, operation uh, action? Because it is also something quite important. Who would like to start answering this question? I think all of you could give a word on that. I, I don't know if I understood the question correctly, but I think that the resilience will become even more important in the future because traffic is always increasing and infrastructure is always aging. So I think it will become even, even more uh, important on that aspect. Yeah. Pedro, you want to add something? <coughs> or? No, no uh, comments about this. Uh, um, um, as, as Basilis said, is okay. The climate is important, but okay, it's another component. Is I think uh, I insist in my main um, uh, idea is uh, uh, this: all the components are work together, and all is important. Yeah, that's all. Mm -hmm. And maybe Sofia, you want to? Uh, it's it's a difficult question. I think. Um, we, we are considering that that uh, the traffic loads are, are constant, but that's not true, of course. Uh, there's less traffic during the night. Uh, so if an event happens during the night, you have less loss of life. Um, and we, we aren't actively considering that, but that's something that you should consider, yes. It, it, it also, yeah, uh, um, uh, Pedro said that uh, everything is, is equally important, um, but of course you, if you want to include the loss of lives, you have to put some value on lives. That's a, a very difficult ethical question. What should you pro prioritize over the uh, over, over other monitoring tasks? Thank you. And I think um, Bernard, you, you put the the, the the finger on uh, in a way on 
one item which is not really included, as you understand, uh, which is the uh, traffic itself. So basically, the, what's happening on the road, you too, even now, CCAM and so on, all this new way of moving. Uh, so this is really good point for uh, maybe for the next uh, some next research. And so I see maybe a reaction from Sergio and then uh, another one in front. Yes, Andres. <coughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Sergio Escriba. I'm project officer and working at CINEA, European Commission. Uh, my question is to, to any of you who would like to react. You have to, you, all the projects have talked about monitoring, uh, prediction, also infrastructure management systems. My question is about the monitoring part. And it's because we are hosted by 2.0, SICA, Mertrack, so people working really on the vehicle side. Uh, in the monitoring, you have talked about uh, fixed sensors attached to the infrastructure and also mobile or even remote sensing. And we, in the next future, we will have uh, big boxes, plenty of sensors, cameras, radars, accelerometers, I mean, automated vehicles. This, uh, this is a big opportunity. I would like to have some insights from you. How you would imagine that this data can be used to fit your uh, monitoring systems. In other words, what type of data would you like to access from this vehicle to monitor the condition of the infrastructure? I see Pedro uh, nodding, but um, this time we start with Pedro. Vasilis yeah. will have more time. Okay. Um, it is, it's a very important and very relevant uh, comment, Sergio. But we have a main problem to, to for for this uh, uh, issue because uh, the car companies is a very difficult uh, uh, sector to to access to this data uh, it's a um, it's a clear um, um, uh, let's say um, a tendency in this moment to work with uh, open data, okay? Uh, because uh, all of us know that uh, every day new open data is possible to use, new the, the municipalities, etc., etc. However, the car companies is very close to uh, to let to allow us to achieve to this data. But uh, if, uh, um, if, if in the future we can access to this, um, in our view, it's very relevant the cameras. It's absolutely, absolutely relevant, it's very important because the cameras has a not uh, um, a resolution to, for example, to monitor in the state of the, of the asphalt or, or the, the assets around to the, to the road. Um, and we have, uh, for us, is very, is a topic of interest to explore the the um, uh, the combination between IMC and GNS, etc. Right? And it's very relevant because um, uh, mm, uh, there are um, a research line, or there is a research line to try to study the response of the uh, the uh, IMU units of the car in relation with the state of the of the asphalt or the state of the of the road right but uh, it's uh, the, the problem is to access, access to this data it's difficult in fact it's impossible for us at this moment um and perhaps if in the future the companies the car companies uh, can uh, imagine a business about this, perhaps it's possible to use and perhaps they can open and etc. But for the moment is the is the main barrier in in my view. Yeah. Pedro, I think there is uh, in that track plenty of uh, you know automotive uh, industry representative as Stefan at the end. Because of time I will not be able to expand on that, but you understand that there is a lot of potential and it's mostly a question of how uh, can we secure business in the way in that dim dimension? Before we end up, uh, Andres, if you if you like to to raise the last question, and then uh, we will need to conclude the session to be resilient. Yeah, sorry, way. because <laughs> we are out of time. Andres Monson, Universidad Politécnica de Madrid, also on behalf of Ertran Ertra Curva Mobility Working Group. Now, the thing is, all the three projects you have. Uh, as always, some case studies to develop the technologies and the application and so on. But uh, it's impossible to foresee, but uh, in these three, four years, 
zijn events happen, like big rains, big uh, flooding, uh, landslides. Do you have the opportunity to check with the information that you could get from those events if, say, the products you had developed could be adapted to, to act or to react in these cases? So it's, the other thing is the European Commission perhaps could have some money to enlarge project, ongoing project, when these things happen. But normally it's not. No? But do you have any information from, for example, big snow events or things like that that could be a, a, applied to the project results? Sofia, you want to, and you will be the one answering for everyone, please. Yeah, well, in, in short, in Panoptes, we haven't been able to really uh, witness a large event, unfortunately. And um, this is something that, okay, it's, it's not good to wish for bad things to happen, but I, I was sort of hoping for a, a larger event uh, that, that we could monitor. But uh, no, unfortunately not, to, to keep it short. I don't know if my colleagues have any experiences with with large events? Um, large events, like catastrophic events, thankfully didn't have uh, yeah. in resist as well. But smaller earthquakes or degradation because of the ice or the snow or the rain or the stuff, I mean, it's already observable and can be also found in the evaluation part of the uh, of the thing. But yeah, but this is uh, uh, things that happen very rarely, and we don't want them to happen. But uh, m minor, I mean, changes and minor issues have already been uh, monitored. In our case, it uh, was the same. Um, we have worked with uh, several pilots, but uh, uh, no serious um, uh, events, strong events in this period. We have worked with um, a data, um, a data collection from the many years ago. But uh, in fact, we uh, make a prediction of scenarios, but not this a real. Uh, okay, it's mm -hmm. not a real case. Yeah. Thank you very much. So I mean, we need to conclude the session. And uh, um, well, you've seen that uh, researchers are, are able, in a way, to be business people and trying to explain in a very uh, concrete manner what are uh, they doing, what are the critical elements, and what are the next steps in, in some uh, straightforward and clear words. And I think against what we normally hear, uh, very uh, complex and sometimes a bit fuzzy, I would like to thank very much uh, the three speakers, Sofia, Pedro, and uh, Vasilis, for their excellent presentation. This is, of course, well managed uh, by um, Rafael, who uh, managed the time. And I'm sorry that you saw, despite the lengths that we had, we finished after. But we are resilient because we will have a shorter break. So <laughs> thank you very much, and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Ok, ça va. Je dois aussi voir Stéphane, en fait, qui m'a proposé de le voir maintenant, mais qu'est-ce qui est mieux Est-ce que je vais lui dire que vous allez faire la vidéo maintenant Ok, alors je vais, dans ces cas-là, lui dire que je vais, je vais faire la vidéo et que je vais le